spectacle of absolutely everything. This is the war of propaganda. And I would think almost nothing one reads in the Western press uh, about, about the invasion of Ukraine is to be trusted. Uh, a scepticism, uh, or well, the skills of scepticism, but I'm not sure the reading public, the watching public, particularly in the United States, possesses. That is crucial now because nothing can be believed. Every day when I scan the media, I, I look at the source, it's Ukrainian intelligence. The, inter the propaganda operation in Ukraine is quite brilliant. Uh, they've managed to uh, invent a chemical warfare attack when there wasn't one. They've managed to, uh, um, to, to, uh, to keep out of the, uh, the Western media, the fact that so much of, of Ukraine is infested, if not run by, but infested with, with the true extremists, fascists, neo-Nazis, they are called. The United States may be about to fight, you're saying, or to uh, encourage a war in which it plays a leading role in Ukraine. What to remember here is the US doesn't give a damn about Ukraine. Ukraine is simply a pawn in this, but the object as the US Defense Secretary is, and I paraphrase him, it, it is to destroy the Russian Federation. That's been known for a long time. That is probably the most dangerous project in the world today, uh, because the Russians are not going to allow that. Well, uh, if you see it from the Russian side, without taking the side of Russia, it looks rather different. Uh, there was Russian troops, as you may remember, up in February, massing uh, on the Ukrainian border, and they eventually invaded. That was the news on this side of the border. On the other side of the border, there were 60,000 Ukrainian troops who were massing on the line of contact right across Donbass. Now, Donbass, as far as the Russians are concerned, is, is the last stepping stone. Uh, you're close by Russia, you have a strategic advantage over Russia. Everything in modern Russian history, uh, and in not so modern history, tells us that the Russians will never uh, tolerate this, that they regard this as the threat, and they have much of their history to justify it. History is, in any discussion of geopolitics, history has to be part of one's analysis, even if it's not overt, it has to be understood. It has, there has to be a basic knowledge of it uh, to understand why things are happening uh, or what is likely to happen. Our ignorance of Russia, like our ignorance of China in the West, allows none of that historical sense of how people see the threat and how political forces see the threat. This is not in any way to, if you like, condone Putin's invasion, but it has to be understood. So I don't think Russia is going to gain from this. Once you unleash war, uh, then uh, literally anything can happen. Well, I've spent my career working in the mainstream, and I've covered probably seven, eight, nine shooting wars. I've never seen a, co a coverage so utterly consumed by a tsunami of jingoism uh, and of manipulated jingoism as this one. And that's why nothing should be trusted. Uh, I say that to people all the time. I said, unless you're going to sit in front of your television and deconstruct what you see, actually take it away with you and and check it and uh, uh, try to verify it as much as you can. And if you can't, to discard it. Well, most people don't have the time to do that. I don't have the time to do it. Uh, therefore, I have to say I ignore it most of the time. There are honourable exceptions. Of course there are. There are very few and far between. I mean, what has happened in my recent lifetime in the mainstream media 
is that um, I'm speaking about, I've spent most of my time in the British, working in the British media, the British press, is that, that spaces that were there for journalists who might be called, let's say, mavericks, that is, they made an effort to tell the truth. They went against the grain. Uh, that was tolerated. When I went into Fleet Street in, in London, starting from the 1960s, there were spaces for people like that, and I filled one of them. Those spaces have been closed. Certainly, there is much more media, and there's probably much more opportunity. And yet, the reporting, this is probably the first war in Ukraine reported by social media. <laughs> That's, that doesn't uh, call on the, the highest standards of professionalism. But it does mean that we, at least we have a way to question what we see and hear and read in the mainstream media. The mainstream media is part of propaganda war. That's not sent, said or meant to be in any way agitprop. I'm speaking against uh, the, uh, the craft that, that, if you like, gave me a home through all my career. But that's the truth. And we must be skeptical. We must be skeptical of absolutely everything.